All right, we are in Algebra 1. Today's date is the 6th of September of the year 2023. All right, remind me, what does that word mean? Rational. Someone shout it out. Fraction. Fractions. We're just dividing fractions. And we're talking about expressions. Expressions, if you remember from that sign in the back, expressions have no equal to sign. It is just simply an expression. It's like a, a statement. All right. Um, I really want to start with an objective today. By the end of today, we will review how to divide fractions. You will have fractions that have negatives. You will have fractions that have mixed fractions and improper fractions. We're doing the whole caboodle today. All right. Let's do a review. I should have done this in our last lesson, but I should do it now. Um, when I do a negative times a negative, a negative times a positive, a positive times a negative, and a positive times a positive, what do we get for each of those multiplication problems? All right, we're gonna go really quick. Evan, negative times negative. Uh, positive. Positive. Um, let's go with Felipe, negative times positive. Uh, very good. Um, Zane, positive times negative. Positive. Ooh, careful. Oh, negative. Negative, yeah. When you have one of each, it's always going to be a negative. Oh, yeah. Um, Shane, positive times positive. It is indeed a positive. These same rules work with division. I'm going to be a little bit pedantic here, and I'm going to rewrite these rules. I'm rewriting exactly the same thing, but I'm changing the multiplication into a division symbol, just so you can have. So if I do it. Uh, negative divided by a negative, that's the same thing as a positive. Again, I'm going to recopy this list down, but I'm switching it out to um, a division symbol. So negative divided by a positive, positive divided by a negative, positive divided by a positive, and recopy the same signs. Negative, negative, positive. In general, if you have the same sign when you're multiplying and dividing, it's going to be a positive. If you have a different sign, it's going to be a negative. So I could summarize that entire list and say, when you multiply and divide, should I actually write this down? I don't know if I should. I'm going to. You don't need to take notes on this if you don't want to. That's the whole point of notes. You get to choose what to synthesize, what to add to your notes. So when you multiply and divide, there are essentially two different options. I can boil this list of eight different facts down into two statements. Ready? Statement one, if it's the same sign, then it's going to be a positive. Look, negative and negative were the same sign, positive. Positive and positive were the same sign, positive. Second rule, different sign. Then it's going to be a negative. This was a negative times a positive, negative. Positive times a negative, negative. Negative divided by positive, negative, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's two rules. This is very different than when we add or subtract. We should, since we're in review mode, we might as well do that today as well, since the lesson is so straightforward. What happens when we add and subtract? Very old rule. Who can remind me what you do when you add and subtract positives and negatives? Again, you have two different options. Option one is you're going to have the same sign. Option two, is there a different sign? If they're the same sign, do we add or do we subtract or does it depend? What do we got here? So let me give you an example off to the side just to try to get your brain working. If you are adding and subtracting the same sign, let's do like negative three minus seven. We're having kind of the, the same sign here. A negative three, you can say technically this is the same thing as plus a negative seven. They're the same sign, therefore we add. And say, like if I have one plus two, they're both positive, we add. So if they're the same sign, add. What if I have something that's different signs? So I'm gonna go ahead and erase you. If they're different signs, that would be something like negative two plus three, or um, a negative two, um, they have to be a different sign. I could say minus a negative one, or I could have one minus four. All of these have different signs. Technically, this is a double negative, which would kiss and become a positive. 
These are all different signs. If there's different signs, then you And there is a second condition that some people tend to forget. Always take the sign of the take sign of larger take sign of larger. Always take the sign of the larger number. If the larger number is three, that sign out front was a positive, so you take that sign. It's kind of silly to say it when you're adding because you're saying, okay, three plus one, which sign is larger? That one, even if you choose a smaller, you're still gonna get the correct answer because they're both the same sign, but whatever. I'm trying to make the rules as consistent as possible. All right, we've reviewed how to add and subtract, how to multiply and divide. Let's go on to the actual new stuff. We're still in review mode for this entire lesson though. All right, um, I'm gonna do an example. Example one. Let's do, um, I don't know, shout out a number. Three, and I hear a six, and a, and a nine. Three and six ninths. Um, I'm feeling like a minus sign. Shout out some more numbers. Two and four. Two and four seven. Beautiful. You guys made the problem way harder than I wanted to, but there it is. Three and six ninths minus two and four sevenths. I was like, what have we done to ourselves? Why? Um, your first rule, just like when you're multiplying fractions, is to turn everything into a improper fraction. Right now, this is called a mixed fraction because it's a whole number with a fraction. There's two things. Make the two things into one thing. Make it as easy as possible. So if I'm making a procedure over here, procedure. The procedure, step one is always make improper fractions. And I use this word improper, and again, that's a fancy way of saying, make it a fraction. It's okay if the top number is too big, like three over two, that's an improper fraction, but I really know it's one and a half. All right, so make improper fractions. That's where we multiply the nine by the three, we add the six. Melanie, you wanna do that for us? What? Make three and six ninths into an improper fraction. Thirty-three over nine. nine. Perfect. Subtract. Um, Valentina, I haven't called on you yet. What is this improper fraction going to be? Twenty-five over seven. Twenty-five over seven. Again, the way that we're doing that. Nine times three is twenty-seven. Plus the six is thirty-three. Seven times two is fourteen. Seven times two is fourteen. Plus four. There we go. Wait. Why? Why are we doing subtraction, Mr. Sindel? Oh my god. Here, here, here. I thought Watch. it was a three. Uh, maybe it's my poor handwriting. That's, that's my bad. I, um, I mean, that definitely looks like a three. I, I'm going to change this problem real quick to a division problem so this actually makes sense. Point, 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 point. Okay, now we're back to division. Okay, this problem was gonna be really hard. Okay, whenever you have a division problem, you're always going to do two things or three things in order to make it easier. It's called the keep, change, flip rule. And there is a rationale behind the rule that you're supposed to learn in like sixth or seventh grade. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply the rule. So it's gonna be a keep, change, flip. All right, I'm gonna keep it. I'm keeping 33 ninths. I just rewrite it. I change the multiplication, or the division into a multiplication. And I flip seven over 18. So if I'm being very official here, I am not changing the fraction. I am indeed taking the inverse operation and I'm going to take the reciprocal of the right side. That's the more academic language. All right, and then we are going to pray to some math deity that there's some cross canceling here because this is a gross problem. Ooh, ooh, I see some way to cross cancel. You guys see it? Nope. There's a way, it's hard. Oh, divide by three. There it is, watch this. If I divide the bottom by three and I divide the top by three, 
you're allowed to do that. You can divide the top and bottom by the same number because you're just going to multiply straight through anyway. Um, the 33 will turn into, shout it out, 11, 11, 11 over 9 times 7 over what? 6. Over 6, okay. Made the problem a little bit easier. I don't think there's any more cross canceling, unfortunately. But it is an easier problem. All right. And I can just multiply straight through. So you multiply top, I guess, step three is to multiply. I, I assume you guys still know how to multiply. Multiply top times top, bottom times the bottom. You don't have to have like denominators when you multiply. Um, who have I not called? Eli, have I called on you yet? Eli, top. Seventy-seven. <laughs> um, Eli, just do the bottom first as well. Fifty-six. <laughs> no. We need to do our blue get somewhere, I think. Um, sixty-three. <laughs> Hold on, you guys. Have you learned your nine tricks on wait, your fingers wait, yet? Wait. No, I don't got it. I'm going to remind us how the nine trick works for those of you that don't know. All right, so if I'm doing nine times six, you put up your 10 fingers, you do it with me, do it with me, here we go. And then you're gonna go ahead and count six places, because we're multiplied by 54. nine. 54! So, so I know, I know. So <laughs> in order to make this backwards, you're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, and put down that finger, and the answer is 54. It worked for any number with nine, well, up to like single digits. Uh, try three times nine. One, two, three, put down that finger, the answer is, 27. Oh. Let's try, um, I don't know, oh. eight, eight times nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Put down that finger and I get 72. I can't wiggle my fingers correctly. That's the trick with nines on your fingers. So Eli, show me with your fingers how you do six times nine. Do the way I did it. <laughs> and because we've done all the cross canceling we can, this fraction, I don't think we can reduce it. You can just. Um, could I give you some negatives? Yes. Do I need to? I think you guys can just do that in the classwork today. Let me just double check to make sure that I don't throw any tricky ones at you. Do I kind of do? I want to do one more example and then we'll call it done. Um, I'm going to come over here for example two. What if I do something like this? Depending on where the fraction symbol is, it can be really tricky. I can't do um, Because sometimes I use a division symbol and sometimes I do a fraction symbol. What if I have nested fractions, fractions within other fractions? What if I say something like two divided by three fourths? How would I do something like that? Again, I would first convert this problem into a problem that looks more like this. And I need improper fractions. So really what I'm saying here, this is the same thing as 2 divided by 3 fourths. So there's an additional, I guess there's a step 0, which is use the division symbol because it makes your life easier. Can we all give me a fist of 5? How well do you understand that this converts into this? Like we're all at 5, okay, perfect. 1. Um, this is saying, if I read this out loud, um, 1 over 2 is the same thing as 1 divided by 2. They're synonymous with each other. So if I type into my calculator, 1 divided by 2, it's the same thing as saying 1 half. So this is the fraction 2 over that thing, so it's 2 divided by that thing. All right. I still haven't done this. It's not an improper fraction. This is 2. I need a fraction. So again, I'm going to convert this as 2 over 1 divided by 3 or 4. And then I'm ready to do a keep change flip. Um, Melly, can you just read out what I should write down? I'll just write. Perfect. Um, Evan, shout out the answer. Uh, 8 over 3. Three. Done. Move box. Now we have the two examples. One of them has nested fractions. It's a fancy sounding word, but nested just means something within something else. So a fraction within a fraction. Mm -hmm. Feel good? All right. So our objective today was 
to review how to divide fractions, essentially. Sometimes I'll have improper fractions. Sometimes I'll give negatives. I didn't do any examples with negatives, but I did review the rules with negatives. How well do you guys feel about dividing fractions after today's lesson? Let's we'll see if this is five. I'm seeing four, five, five, four, five, five, five. 